This message will be a message concerning the girl that did not wear enough clothes. In the 14th chapter of the book of Matthew, the Bible said in the time Herod the Tetarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. Therefore mighty works do they show forth themselves in him. Uh, for Herod had laid hold on John and bound him, put him in prison for Herodas' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. Our Father, I pray that you'd bless this message. May it be a, 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 a message that will cause young women, Christian women, to want to dress that which would please the Lord and dress in a manner that would glorify the Savior. And we'll praise thee in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to speak to you as I've already announced on the subject. The young girl are the girl that did not wear enough clothes. Now the Bible teaches that uh, uh, Christian girls ought to dress modestly. A Christian woman ought to dress that which becometh holiness. And certainly with this new fad and uh, this mini skirt and these short dresses that you're seeing today, these do not please or bring glory to the Lord. And when you think about this young lady, she came out and danced the fan dance before King Herod. It pleased him, the Bible said. Here's a girl uh, indecently dressed. Here's a girl that comes out to do the fan dance. And the scripture says, that he caused John the Baptist to lose his head. Now, when we think about this new day in which we live, or the hour in which we have the miniskirt, everything, my friend, today points toward that which is indecent, and that which inspires nudity. Now, if you'll look in the Bible, my friend, you'll find everything that in heaven, the scripture said, is clothed. But everything in hell will be naked. The Bible says that God himself is clothed in Psalm 91 and verse 1. And it says, God is clothed with honor and majesty. The angels, the Bible says, are also clothed. In Mark 16 and verse 5, speaking of the angel of the resurrection at the tomb, an angel clothed in a long white garment. And then since, uh, my friend, we uh, talk about Christian women following the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, then we ought to recognize that uh, the Lord requires uh, clothing and decency to his followers. I believe that a young girl, a Christian girl, ought to dress like a Christian. I believe her dresses ought to be long enough and she ought to be covered that it bring not shame to the Lord. Why, you take when you read about Jesus Christ in Revelation. Revelation 1.13, the scripture said he was clothed with a garment down to the foot. And so when we talk about uh, clothing and we speak about this modern age of uh, mini skirts and shorts and, and bathing suits and uh, this uh, sort of clothing, it would bring shame and disgrace to the Christian girl. It leads to adultery. Uh, this young girl here danced before Herod. She did not wear enough clothes. And it brought shame, adultery, and then murder. Because John the Baptist, that great forerunner of Christ, lost his head because of a young girl that danced and, and came before him indecently dressed. But someone might say, does God always uh, place judgment on nudity? Yes, sir, my friend. Anytime you open your Bible, you begin to read about indecency, nakedness, shame, you'll find that God pronounces a woe upon those that do not dress properly. Now, you say, why? Because, well, back in the very beginning, Adam and Eve. Genesis chapter 3, the Bible said they saw that they were naked and they were afraid after sin came in uh, to their lives. After sin came into the Garden of Eden, my Bible says that they saw that they were naked and they made fig leaf aprons to try to cover up their nakedness. The Lord came down in the cool of the day and said, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, we were afraid and we hid ourselves. But I, my friend, the fig leaf aprons did not cover up uh, their nakedness. And God took innocent animals and shed blood and made them 
coats of skin. Genesis 3 verse 21. So way back in the, even in the beginning. When sin had just come to the first man. And brought shame. God said that nakedness shall be covered. And in the beginning. Way back there in the garden of Eden. As far as man's history is concerned. And the history of man. When man sinned and became naked. God clothed him. And then if we open the Bible. We'll see a little farther over. Where Noah in chapter 9. The scripture said uncovered himself. And lay drunk before his tent. The word of God as you recall. And uh, uh, you read the scripture. The Bible says that as he was lying there uncovered in his nakedness, his son came by and looked upon his nakedness. Now, Noah, that man of righteousness. Noah, that man that preached 120 years. Noah, the man, my friend, that God used to save the world. There he was preaching, preparing an ark for the saving of his household. And yet after God spared him, after the flood... After Noah built an altar, he planted a vineyard, drank wine, and got drunk and brought shame. And because of that shame, today the world is under a curse. A curse of races because of the shame of Noah's nakedness. But not only do we find the shame because of Noah's nakedness, and then we see Adam and Eve's nakedness, but Moses, you recall as he goes up to talk with God on the mountain in Exodus 32, when he comes back down he saw that the people were naked and the scripture says that it made them a golden calf they were dancing and naked before that calf and Moses cried in indignation who's on the Lord's side let him come over and let him join at the gate of the Levite if you're on the Lord's side in other words he's saying put on some clothes stop that dancing stop that worship of the golden calf and let's serve the Lord God of Israel my friend I believe this that when a person is right with God I believe that a Christian woman will want to dress that which would become holiness under the Lord and which would bring honor and glory to the name of Christ while you go into some of our churches today and you'll find that women dress indecent there was a time you could go to a burlesque show or go to one of those indecent leg shows in the past and there you'd pay with your money to see indecency and nakedness now you can go to the average church and you'll see more nakedness and uh, indecent dress than years ago you saw at, at a, a vaudeville show now you say preacher maze What's the difference? My friend, it's the style, they say. And people say, well, don't you believe that a young girl needs to keep up with the style? I believe that we preachers need to stand up in our pulpits and cry as Moses did of old. Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come over. and Let her come over. And let us stand with God's people. We ought to dress like God's people. And I believe certainly that every young girl and every woman ought to dress modestly. That's what Paul said. He talked about the modest dress of the Christian woman. And oh, today, when you see all uh, these new styles of these short dresses and miniskirts, you should feel as Moses felt of old, if they're going to go to church and if they're going to have the name of being God's people, it's time to come over on the Lord's side and put on some clothes. But not only do we find God frowned upon nakedness in the time of Adam and Eve and nakedness in the time of Noah and then as far as uh, Moses was concerned we turn also in our Bible and we find that one of the worst sins that we have recorded in the Bible one of the most shameful sins over in 2 Samuel chapter 11 is the sin of David and Bathsheba Bathsheba was the young woman that uh, took a bath exposed her, sh her nakedness before King David. My Bible said that King David was up on the housetop and he looked and saw Bathsheba in her indecent dress. Or there she was taking a bath. He lusted after her. And that's the, that's the sin. That's the wrong of the miniskirt. That's the wrong, my friend, of the short dress. Because it leads to lust. It leads to eyesight adultery. And someone has said, if you women who are not 
not advertising adultery and not advertising your body for sale, then you ought to wear your dress long enough and you ought to cover your body that you might not advertise yourself for sale. Someone has said that's eyesight adultery because the Lord Jesus said, Whosoever shall look upon a woman to lust after her the same has committed adultery already in his heart. Back in the Old Testament, Jesus said that Moses and talked about adultery and talked about this sin of adultery. But he said, I say unto you, whosoever shall look upon a woman to lust after her, the same hath committed adultery already in his heart. And so we call this advertising adultery when we see the indecent dress. And then we call the sin, the sin of eyesight adultery. The Lord said you're guilty already in your heart. And so David looked at Bathsheba and he called for a servant and said, go bring that woman unto me. And it brought shame and murder and heartache to David. David, after that great sin, had to pray the great 51st Psalm in humble repentance toward God. You remember that David lost his baby after his baby. His girl was ravished and then his boy was stabbed and then his boy Absalom was caught in the top of a tree or in the tree, an oak tree by the hair of his head. And the Bible said the mule that he was riding left him hanging in that tree. One of David's soldiers uh, shot three arrows through Absalom and David comes down and gets off of his beast and walks over and looks at Absalom hanging in the tree and says oh Absalom, oh Absalom would to God it have been me my friend the shame and the disgrace that was brought about because David looked at Bathsheba but my friend it would have never happened had Bathsheba pulled the shade or had Bathsheba not exposed her nakedness. Young lady are woman that may be listening to this recording do not be guilty of causing someone to look and lust and cause great sin. And then I want you to notice in the Bible the scripture speaks about Belshazzar's feast Daniel 5 it speaks about how that the king made a great feast of the thousands of his lords and he brought his concubines and there in that time uh, praising the gods of uh, silver and gold and stone. The Bible said they were drinking and uh, they were dancing. And in that indecent dress, Brother God took all that he could take. And the scripture says that he wrote on the wall, Many, many tickle you far shin. What an awful sight that was. Yes, there that night in that uh, great, awful party of debauchery, somebody said the ball was going strong and the dancing was getting swifter. And and the liquor was flowing freer. And then God looked down upon that naked party and said, "It's, it's, that's enough. And he wrote on the wall, Beloved, when God sees all the nakedness and the shame and the indecent dress of our time, I, I imagine he's saying that I'm going to step in and I'm going to write on the wall. Many, many tickle you far shin. Thou art weighed in the balances and found warning. And then as we look into the Bible, we find, and I read you about Herod's party, about the young girl that did not wear enough clothes. We see a striptease dancer. We see a young girl doing the fan dance. And it caused a man to lose his thinking. My Bible said Herod swore, gave an oath. And then said to the young girl, Hey, even half of my kingdom will I give unto thee whatsoever that she shall ask. Yes, this nakedness, this indecent exposure of this girl that did not wear enough clothes brought shame and disgrace because the Bible says, that uh, uh, it caused the head of John the Baptist to be severed. Now I want you to notice one other uh, picture here in the Bible where we find indecent dress or nakedness and what God said about it. Mark 5 tells about a wild man that lived in the cemetery of the Grat Gathering country. The word of God said he cried in the day and he cried in the night. He bid himself. The scripture said there he was sleeping in the tombs. No man could bind him. There he was in shame, naked, sleeping in a graveyard. But one night across the Sea of Galilee was a little boat. In that boat some disciples and the master of the tempest was there. The Lord Jesus Christ on his way to the gathering country. The wind blew, the storm arose, but Jesus stood up 
and said, Peace be still. When he got to the other side, there came a man running out of the graveyard down the hill from the gathering country. And Jesus saw there was a tempest in his soul. Jesus saw the storm that was in that man's life. And just as he raised his hand out on that ship and calmed the sea that was in a storm, I'm glad he raised his hand and cast the devils out of that young man. And the Bible said they went into the swine and the swine ran violently down the hill and they drowned themselves. And so we see the picture of what happened. And the scripture said as soon as this young man had those demons cast out of him that he went and got him some clothes on and came in his right mind and sat down at the feet of Jesus. You see what happens my friend when you come to know the Lord. I tell you you ought to be in your right mind. And the scripture says uh, that this man came and sat at his feet at the feet of Jesus. But let's go back to the uh, the uh, sixth chapter here and uh, the 14th chapter of Matthew, sixth chapter of Mark. We see the young girl that did not wear enough clothes. It brought the shame and even it caused the death of the greatest preacher Jesus said that ever lived. He said of John the Baptist, none born of woman was greater. And yet this sin brought shame and disgrace. And someone might say, well, do you think, Brother Mays, that uh, the miniskirt, the short dress, and the way that women are dressing today would cause sin as it did in the olden days? My friend, human nature has not changed. The style and the fashion of this world is downward. And young lady, if you are a Christian, you're not to be patterning after Paris. You're not to be patterning after Hollywood. But you're to pattern after what the Word of God says that a Christian woman ought to pattern. Now somebody might say, well, what should a Christian girl do? Or how should a Christian woman dress? And what should a Christian woman uh, do concerning this modern fad and this modern parade of nudeness and nakedness with their mini skirts and the short dresses. Let me give you uh, just a few things. Number one, admit the Bible commands that you dress modestly. Now if you'll turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 8 through verse 10 you'll find where the Bible places the, the law of a modest dress before the Christian woman. And so the first thing every woman ought to do. You ought to admit the Bible commands that you're to dress like a Christian woman and dress like a Christian girl. And then secondly, abstain from all appearance of evil. Now the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 22 that we're to abstain from all appearance of evil. Now you say, well preacher, it doesn't bother me to wear my mini skirt. Brother Mays, it doesn't bother me to wear a short dress. Well, it has the appearance of evil. It has the uh, appearance of exposure and my friend, that is evil in itself. So if you expose your nakedness, then my friend, you're giving appearance of evil. Then in the third place, keep yourself pure. My Bible said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew 5 and verse 8. Christian women ought to be pure. Christians, uh, Christian girls ought to want to be pure and have those about them with pure minds. And when the young girl today parades down the street with a a dress that's too short or a mini skirt, it will cause the men to look and lust and certainly it will bring impurity. It violates this verse where it said, Blessed are the pure in heart. And certainly if you want to be pure in your heart, young lady, you ought to dress so that others would not be impure when you pass by. And then in the fourth place, do not become a slave to fashion. My Bible tells me, that we are not to be conformed to this world. But we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We are not to be uh, copying the world like Paris and Hollywood. And then we ought to avoid extremes. Men and women. But especially the women when it comes to dress. The fashion of this world, the Bible said, will pass away. First Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 31. Then God said, Be not conformed to this world. Romans 12 and verse 2. And then the scripture said, We are to hate even the garments spotted by the flesh. Jude verse 23. 1 John 2 and verse 15. The Bible said, Love not the world, neither the things that are any in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not 
in him. And then, young lady, obey the Bible admonition about clothing. Deuteronomy 22, 5 says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth, or is identifieth herself unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, I believe that this is teaching that uh, uh, 1 Timothy 2, 9 as it states that we're to dress modestly, that we're not to dress, the men are not to dress like the women, neither the women are to dress like the men. Then we, uh, every person that's saved, man and woman, should attend a Bible preaching church. Lady, go where they preach the Word of God. Dress like the New Testament tells the Christian to dress today. Make much of your Bible. And remember this, when you go out in public, as a Christian woman or a Christian girl, bring honor to the Lord Jesus Christ in the matter of living holy and dressing as a Christian ought to dress, covering up your nakedness and walking as the Lord would have you walk before this world, clothed and in your right mind.